So in this lecture, we are going to take a look at some MATLAB examples of how to solve nonlinear equations. Specifically, we're going to look at this example, 10.1, using the SRK equation of state and F0 to find molar volumes of two gases, A and B. To put, th put things into context, we are looking at this bigger problem, where you have gas A flowing through this pipe and gas B flowing through this pipe. They will eventually be mixed, sent to a reactor and a condenser, where you have a product stream and a recycle stream. In this case, we are going to, uh, these two pipes have flow meters and pressure gauges, so we know those things about it, but we need to have molar flow rates in order to calculate other things about the problem. So we're going to use MATLAB, F0, and the SRK equation of state in order to find the molar flow rates via finding the molar volumes of the two gases. Now the relevant constants of the gases for the SRK equation of state are here. We have the critical temperature, critical pressure, and this value omega, which is the acentric factor. And these things are specific to the specific gases. And then we also have in this table our conditions for our two pipes. Now recall, the SRK equation of state looks like this here, where each one of these constants, alpha, A, and B, can be evaluated on the basis of the gas-specific constants that I've shown up here in this table according to these calculations over here on the side. So in order to get A you have to do, and B, you have to do these two calculations. In order to get alpha, you have to first use the acentric factor to calculate this value M, and also use the reduced temperature here to get alpha. <clears throat> so in order to use a nonlinear equation solving software, we first have to put the SRK equa equation of state in the form of f of x equal to zero. or in this case we have f of v hat equaling to the right hand side of the SRK equation of state from above. And then we're just going to subtract p and move that over to this side. And so when the SRK equation of state is satisfied, f of v hat will equal to zero. Now of course as an iterative process we need an initial guess. And so the best thing to do is use the ideal gas molar volume as our initial guess. So v hat a initial guess, so v hat a zero equals r times t over p. Now p was 150 psig, and so we're just going to convert that to psia by adding 14.7. And then of course we have to convert that into atm. And that gives us a value of 2.18 liters per mole. <clears throat> so now we're going to use F0 to solve for V hat A. So to do this first we have to write a MATLAB function M file that accepts V hat as input and spits out F of V hat as output. So the function will look some, begin to look something like this where you have your function F where this here is our one output it's a scalar and it is going to correspond to f of v hat. You have your file name, in this case it is shown here. This is the, the thing, the file that we're actually going to name that we're actually going to save onto our computer. And then you have only one input. You have one input and that is our variable that we were trying to solve for. In this case, v hat. <clears throat> So in this function, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define all our constants and conditions, <clears throat> r, t, c, p, c, and omega, the last three of which being the gas-specific constants, and then of course p and t, our pressure and temperature of our pipe. From those, we're going to calculate the various things that need to go into the SRK equation of state, notably a, b, and alpha, and finally to define our function f of v hat. And so what that's going to look like, it's going to look like this here. This is the first line that I told you before. You can read the comments here that I put into the function so that you can know what the function is if you go back to it later. <clears throat> Next, we define our constants, R, T, C, P, C, and omega, give values to them, and also our temperature and pressure. From those, calculate A, B, M, T, R, and alpha. And finally, we define our function F of V hat. Now note, what MATLAB is looking at here is they're looking at all of these variables as constants or they're just numbers. And so you want, what this function is taking on is this value v hat, or v for convenience, 
and it's spitting out a value of the function f evaluated at that v hat. And so what f0 is going to do when we call on it, um, telling it to look at this function, is it's going to vary v hat from the initial guess and find a value of v hat such that f is equal to 0. So when we flip back over to our lecture notes, the next thing we need to do is write a script to call f0 and to call on that f0 with that function. And so the first thing that we see here is we have our initial guess here that we calculated above. We have our function handle, which is the at sign, followed by this here, which corresponds to the file name of the function that we're looking at. Right. So this, that's the file name. And this is the file name as it's stored on my computer without the .m extension. And then we actually call on f0 here, where f0 takes these two as inputs. So what f0 is expecting, these follow, following two inputs, it expects the handle for the function. So where, what function am I going to look at? And the second input is our initial guess. And then finally, of course, what I always want you to do is display your output in an, uh, this nice formatted way using this disp function so that you can find, um, you can run this script very easily and find out what the output is. So running this script, what we find, actually before you do, we do that, I'm going to show you what the script looks like. So it looks like this on the inside. Um, this is exactly what I showed you before with the exception of this extra display here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it by hitting control enter. And what that does is it evaluates all the code in between these two bars here. So hit control enter. And what we find that MATLAB output is tells us that, oops, I must have been in the wrong section. Try again. The, it tells us that the molar volume of A is 2.0415, or just a three sig figs, 2.04 liters per mole. Now, of course, we want the molar uh, flow rate. Um, and we're going to use this later on to get the molar flow rate. But let's go ahead and go on to guess B. So we have to have an, another initial guess for B. Now, it's probably sufficient just to use the same initial guess, and it'll probably converge into the right thing. But to be um, precise, what we're going to do is we're going to use the same kind of initial guess, just the ideal gas law guess for the molar value, molar volume of B. <clears throat> now, note, for B, the pressure is 175 PSIG instead of 150. So we're just going to multiply our previous initial guess by the ratio of these two pressures to get our molar volume of gas B. So we have the molar volume of B now is equal to, as an initial guess, the molar volume of A initial guess times the ratio of the two pressures, 150 PSIG and 175 PSIG. And that gives us a initial guess of 1.89 liters per mole for gas B. OK, so what we could do to solve for B is we could just take the SRK code um, that we already wrote for A and tailor it for B. So we would go into the script, or sorry, into the function and change the values of TC, PC, omega to change it to the gas B, and then also the pressure is different. And then we could call on F0 just the same way we did before and find the molar volume of B. But there's a more preferred way to do this. And what we, to do this, what we want to do is we want to implement F0 with tunable parameters. So F0 with parameters is the path that we want to do to go by. And the reason why is it makes our um, calling on F0 and the SRK equation of state a little bit more general. So to do this, we first modify our function. So now at this point, we still have the same output. We have equals to a file name, which is a slightly different file name. We have our one variable. But also now the function accepts as input these extra constants. So what this will allow us to do is it'll allow us to vary the um, temperature and pressure and also the identity of the gas and evaluate the SRK equation of state in a more general way. So this function will have, um, we'll define R first. We'll have code to evaluate um, the other things that go into the SRK equation of state from the extra constants that we have up here, plus r. And then finally, we're going to define our function v hat there at the bottom. To see what that looks like, it's the exact same line of code I was showing you in the lecture notes up there. 
um, comments up here. Now again, we, we define R, but we don't have to define T, P, T, C, P, C, or omega anymore. We go right on to calculate uh, the different constants and quantities that are going to, into the SRK equation of state. And the final line is the same as well. So the main difference about this function is it now accepts these five things as input. And these five things are not hardwired into the function itself anymore, as they were over here in this one, where TC, PC, and omega were just explicitly defined from within the function. Now the function accepts them as inputs. OK, so how do we then call on it, our function, this way using f0? And so that, that's the next thing to go over. So as we scroll down in our lecture notes, the first thing we need to do is modify our script so that the, the, the values of these constants, tc, pc, and omega, and also the conditions for the pressure and temperature, are defined explicitly within our script now rather than in our function. And then we call on f0. So in f0, we have, again, our um, initial guess. We have our function handle. Oops, there's not supposed to be a space here. So we have our function handle here. And then we call on F0 in this way. So in F0, we have, again, we have the same two inputs that we had before, the same two kind of inputs. So our function handle followed by our initial guess. But then the argument that comes right after our initial guess is a series, is, is a pair of empty brackets empty square brackets. And then after that, we have our five extra constants in the exact same order as we had them in in the function. So the, that order would be t, p, tc, pc, and omega. So what does that script now look like? Well, if we scroll down to the next lines in our script, we have our definitions of the five uh, of the three gas specific quantities and also our two conditions, T and P, for that, for that pipe. And then our call onto F0 looks just like what we had before, except for now we have the empty brackets followed by the five extra constants that are um, present in the function. And then again, we're going to display our output. So when I run this, again, by hitting Control Enter so that it evaluates all the lines of code in between that double percent sign and this double percent sign, what we find is that our molar volume of B, darn, I must have been on the wrong thing again. Our molar volume of B is 1.9027. <clears throat> Finishing up, if you scroll down, these, these would be our calculations for the molar flow rate. So if I run that line, uh, that set of code, it tells us that our two feed rates in terms of molar flow rates are those two right there. So wrapping up the lecture notes, V hat B is 1.90 liters per mole. And our molar flow rates, which would be N dot I equals volumetric flow rate divided by molar flow rate for the two uh, species would be 27.9 and 18.4 moles per minute.